My captains are here to help you. They're not here to hide secrets and all that because sturgeon fishing is sturgeon fishing. You know, by me telling you how I fish, you're not going to interfere with my business, personally. Here we are. We all fish our own little styles, own little areas, own little things. <clears throat> I'm going to rifle through this quick just as a group. Then they're going to sit down while we start the raffle. And you can come up and ask individually whatever pre uh, questions you want. We've been doing this for 10 years, so a lot of the questions everybody knows. So we don't want to bore you with all that. So I think if we sit down, and they're here to help you guys out. Okay, they tell you their style, their way to do it. And if it works for you, great. If not, maybe one of the other captains will. So let's get started. You can either pick a, pick a captain or whatever. I don't care. Just throw me the question, and I'll hand it off. Maybe Last time I did it, I got the names wrong. <laughs> Long foot sport fishing. This is barbarian sport fishing. John, Mike at Predator, Bill Clapp sport fishing, Captain Don, Soul Man sport fishing, and Paul Boss Hog sport fishing. We all do this for money, make a living, put our kids through school. I got one more left. Woohoo! <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, give me some questions. Who has a question? Yes, sir. One question. Well, two questions. Bait. No, you only have one. Bait and location. <laughs> bait and location. Bait, whatever they're biting, location, wherever they're at. How's that? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> and usually they're in the water. <laughs> okay, no. Actually... I will tell you, I, I'll start and tell you what I'm doing. Since I moved the boat over in November, everything for me has been straight eel. I'll tell you right now, eel has been the ticket. Uh, almost every trip we put uh, extra rods on the side, my, my deckhand or myself, we play with row, we'll play with other baits, but we keep going back to the eel. And that's since I came over in mid-November. Uh, location, I've been doing well between the bridge and the fleet. Uh, this last week, I've been out for four or five days setting this up, but I found some fish in the south side. It seems like they changed after the last set of big rains we had. The water did warm up a little bit, makes them a little more active, and I think a lot more fish are coming down out of the river system. So if I was going out tomorrow, I'd probably look at the south side, back over toward the sandbar, and just trying to see where they're at now, because I've been off the water for like four days, five days. Um, let's see what Mike says. Mike, fish is totally different than I do. Well, I've been fishing farther down towards the mouth of the Napa River and San Pablo Bay, but we have been running up. My favorite, if you guys have ever seen me, I fish more up towards uh, Roe and Ryer Island, the flats out there, the shallows. I love skinny water, so you're not going to see me in anything deeper than about 10 feet of water tomorrow. We'll be out there. But here's a little side note. All the fresh water right now is on the surface. First 10 feet of water, you're going to get the most beautiful reading on your fish finders. Everything below it, if there is any salt water making up, it's all underneath right there. So if you want sweet water, fish shallow. If you want salt water, fish deep. Last night I spent some time over here at Ozo. I don't know, you might want to spend some time over there. We, used, uh, we had some meal last night, and that's pretty much, uh, we had that on all night long. Um, I think we, we actually we did switch to some salmon rope. Um, I don't generally fish it like these guys do. If I'm putting eel out, I got eel on everything, you know, for a drop. And I check all my baits all at the same time. And I put everything all back out again. But uh, I, I've, been, I've, been, uh, I've been using a little bit of eel and a little bit of rope. My presentations are a little smaller right now. Um, like I said, you know, deeper water, taking advantage of the salt water thing that he's talking about. Um, I don't know. It's been pretty successful. We just we've been pretty good. We've been doing pretty good messing around with uh, the big tide of the day. You know, I always take the big tide. You know, recently I, my hours range drastically right now um, because I'm just trying to take advantage of that the biggest tide of the day, biggest outgo of the day. Okay. How about another question? How do we rig the eel? Uh -huh. Well, that's good. Just that is good. Yeah, actually, um, I think a lot of us do it differently. I'll let Bill start on how he rigs his eel. I actually do it two ways. Uh, first, I'll slide it down the leader. In some cases, because I'll put a big bead on top of the hook. And I don't actually have the hook inside the eel at all. 
And then I also will hook it through the round portion of the eel in other ways. It's just a matter of which way they're taking the bait. That's about it. Done. They live in brown water. They got little bitty eyes. I don't think the things really see too well. So for me, it's smell and fresh. I mean, the only other thing I could say about presentation is, you know, my boat ties up in San Francisco, so pink bead and something long and skinny, and that always seems to attract something. I can't even ball that up, man. <laughs> That's cold. That's cold. <laughs> How do you follow that? <laughs> Super. <laughs> like these guys were saying, it's all scent. Okay, these guys don't use their eyesight, and they're like 85% blind anyway. Uh, it's all smell to them, so I would recommend, I'm real, real critical on how we handle the bait. We don't let it hit the deck, pick up some engine oil or mayonnaise, nothing like that, because uh, even your weights, your weights is the beginning of your scent trail. If you look how the current flows, it goes over your weight, over your bait, and then you start setting up a scent trail. Uh, so I want, I want them only to smell eel, and that eel milks or oils long periods of time. So it's uh, put it out there, squat and rot, let, let them find it. You know, you don't need to check it. My personal rot, I'll set it out there. If it doesn't get fouled with grass or anything, I'll just leave it out there the whole tide. There's no reason to check it. You got more time in the water. Any other questions? Cured or uncured roe? Cured or uncured roe? Oh, everybody's got their own ideas on that. I use mostly uncured roe, uh, personally, because if I was a sturgeon, that's what I'm finding out there. Occasionally, I'll put some sugar or something on there, but not too much. The thing about curing your roe, just they don't like sulfites, borax, stuff like that. But you take the risk. There are some really good recipes out there, but there's also some really bad recipes, too. So if you have a good batch of roe that you got from somebody and you don't know a good recipe, then don't do it. Use it plain. That's, that's your best. If you, if you put the wrong recipe on it, then, you, then you've got a batch of just bait that's not going to work. So go easy on that stuff. But also, as far as keeping it, it just freezes well. Don't try to preserve it or anything. Ziploc bags. Freeze it in small proportions, though, because if you get a big old giant five-pound block, when it comes time to thawing it out, then you then you got a mess there. So, you know, break it up into smaller portions. How many guys here actually use a row? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> Here's a suggestion for you. If you want to know it or not, okay, you got a little tub, you're probably working it in your in your boat, right? And you're you know, you got your bait in your little tub. Get some cured row and get some uncured row. Put it in a tub. Let it sit there for a little bit. If one turns white, kind of keep track of how long it takes for it to turn white. The 15 minutes, guess what? You got 15 minutes on that bait. Pull it out of water 15 minutes, put more bait on there. If your cured row is sitting there and it still looks good after about a half hour, it's still fishing. It's still fishing. Cure it. I'm a man of simplicity, okay? Absolute simplicity. I got a bag of sugar in my boat and I got a bag of salt in my boat. The salt doesn't have any iodine in it, okay? And that's how I, you know, I determine what I'm gonna do for the day. We got a big incoming tide, we got a lot of fresh water, guess what? I'm definitely scooping to figure out how much water I, you know, what, how much water I do have, right? And I'll put a piece of cured and a piece of uncured in there and just let it sit there. And you'll know. You'll know if you're fishing, if your bait's fishing or not. Yeah, most of the time I use uh, uncured row. Uncured row is, if you can use it, uncured row is the way to go. Uh, the problem is when the water temperatures drop and you get fresh water in the system, they, they leach differently and they milk differently. If, uh, if your uncured row isn't milting good, then you can do a little salt, sugar. But like John said, just simple. Don't No dyes, no professional made cures, just salt and sugar. And I, I just give it a couple minutes and then put it on the hook. That's that's it. That'll just get it enough to, to milt out. And that's usually in, in colder water temperatures when the water temperature drops. Like if we got 53, 54 degree water raw row, it milts really, really well. Any other questions? We'll talk about. You wrap it. Give you a chance to ask individual questions and a little. Okay, bit. that gentleman there, I saw him earlier. Go ahead. How much row do you use? Golf ball size for me. What do you guys think? I think it depends on how much you're putting out. You know, if I have 
No, I, I have a large boat, so I, sometimes I have 12, 14 rods out, so I don't have to have big, huge presentations on any type of bait. Whereas if you're you're just fishing by yourself, you got to get it out there. So you know, golf ball size. I've heard even larger. I've done it both ways with a lot and with a little, and it seems like. You know, later on in the year, you know, your smaller presentations are a little bit better. Earlier on in the year, you know, September like that, man, I put all I can. If I got if I got a chance to put 12 rods out, 12 rods are going out and they're all going to have row on them. And they're all going to get checked every 30 minutes, plain and simple. You know, that's the way it works. I'm kind of a control freak on my boat, you know. If you come on my boat, you're probably not going to be able to fish with that eel that you brought if I'm fishing with row, you know. <laughs> If I'm fishing with eel or row, you know, if I usually put a couple of eel rods out up on the front, but they're way out of my spread for the, you know, for the salmon row. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get all the, all the little BBs I can out when I'm fishing. And then, like I said, when, they, when I feel that they've milked out, then I'll, you know, I'll recast everything, put it all back out there. My deckhand works hard. That's what he does. Every 30 minutes, he pulls it out, puts it all back in again. Yeah, it just depends. Uh, anywhere from a golf ball size down to a quarter size uh, works good. A lot of it depends on how many rods you got out, how much bait do you have available. If you guys are fishing with salmon row, you know that unless you're ordering large amounts of it like we do, it's, it's hard to come out with five pounds a row for the, for the day of fishing. Uh, in, in the fall, in the September, October, November, five, six, seven pounds a row on my boat is a pretty common sight. Uh, so I can get away with using pretty large baits but as the the row thins out in the springtime I'm making three pounds turn into five pounds or making two pounds turn into five pounds and the baits get baits get smaller but if every rod on the boat has row on it you got a good scent on there and you don't need a big big pile of it no bigger than a golf ball again it's all about scent guys you just want to get the scent out there that's what they're looking for or they're smelling for they should be looking for they're smelling for uh, keep in mind too, you guys can jump on any of these boats and see how they fish and uh, it'll probably help you out on your, your fishing, so just keep that in mind. Is, it, is there more than one type of lamprey eel? Is there more than one type of lamprey eel? Yeah, big red. Probably is. Um, Expensive and um, really expensive. <laughs> expensive and really expensive. That's a good question. I, I can't answer that question because I, I use stuff out of the Klamath River. Big, I just like big fat eels that put out a lot of scent personally. You don't want a real eel. It has a back to You want the lamp. <coughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know of any others either no, that I'm aware of. Don? Supposedly, and I'm not an authority on this, they, I have heard bait people talk about lamprey eels from other areas and then they use the term river eels. I don't know if there's a difference, but it seems like the one that they call lamprey eels seems to be the one that works. You talk to most of your boat bait people, they're going to tell you the one that costs you about 30 bucks. That's always their best one to get. Well, there's two, there's two types. Some have a mouth. Others have like a sucker, right? It has a bunch of little teeth or something like that inside. Uh, those are the true lamprey, the one with the suckers, not the actual mouth. Okay, so I mean I've used them both. Best I think is just definitely the, the lamprey, the straight lamprey, not the one. I, I mean, you know the one with the mouth may be a river eel. I'm not right. sure. I think that's the river. Um, I think that is. Is an eel. I, it is. The lamprey is not actually an eel. It's an Asian dollars. Yeah. Beautiful. Here, give her this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, what Jordan is saying is correct. The lamprey is not an eel, it's a lamprey, okay? <laughs> an eel has a backbone. The lamprey is basically a giant leech is what it is. It has a sucker mouth, some teeth, something like you see in a science fiction movie. And what they do is they attach, they lock onto a fish or any other host, and they fill it with blood, okay? Um, if you When you cut them up, there's no... Um, no, uh, no, no bones in them or nothing. They're basically like a giant leech. A real eel is a whole different thing. They call it eel because it looks like it, but it's not a real eel. Lampreys are actually more common than you guys even know about. They, they swim up into every single creek that we have in the bay. There's actually three different types of lamprey eels. They've been the true sturgeon bait when you when you read the record books and you go back to the turn of the century when they were commercially fishing for sturgeon. 
Lamprey Eel was the choice. Uh, if you talk to some of the guys that live up in Sacramento and farther up, even I've even heard of the guys up in uh, Sonoma Creek, Petaluma River, there are annual runs of lamprey eels. They have they have spawning beds just like salmon. They're really difficult to see, but but they are there. Um, you know, California we allow it. The uh, the two states up above they don't allow it. Um, if you wanna, if you ever make your uh, trips and you go by Bonneville and you go to the fish ladder up there at Bonneville on the Columbia River, you would be amazed at the number of lamprey eels that are scaling those those fish ladders right there. And so they they are a common food. That's why they're so good for sturgeon bait. They are as natural a bait as shrimp is. I'm glad he's here. How many of you remember the uh, mitten crabs? Yeah. Oh, that's when eel really came into play because they couldn't. It's so tough they couldn't tear it off. That's when I started using it because you could leave it out there. Anything else they did destroy it. That's kind of when it got popular. I heard the fishing game was using it on their long lines to catch fish to tag and research. That's how I got wind of it. But uh, it's it's actually right now me personally. That's my number one bait.